Greetings and blessings to all. This is Father Carlos. I'm uh, I'm heading from Clearwater to Dade City, and I wanted to take this opportunity to just share some words of consolation in regards to the death of Father David. We're both driving together. He's right here next to me. So he's riding with me, and I uh, wanted to. Uh, Especially for those who in Aurora and other places that didn't get a chance to be a part of his funeral at the cathedral yesterday or at St. Rita, uh, at St. Cecilia this morning. So I wanted to share a couple of words. Um, in, in my sorrow and my grief, I, I was asking the Blessed Mother, uh, Mother, give me some source of consolation in the midst of this pain and in this sorrow. Uh, over the death of my friend and uh, so I was sitting in my chair I get off my chair I go to the kitchen I come back to my chair to the home shrine my home shrine and I see a little piece of paper in front of my home shrine I pick up the piece of paper uh, and it was my own personal notes from the homily that I preached on the feast day of All Saints Day uh, which I saw that as a message from our Blessed Mother responding to my promptings to have some form of consolation. And in the homily, I made a note, you know, I, of uh, how I was going to preach it. And I remember that day I started the homily by uh, singing, Oh, when the saints go marching in, Oh, when the saints go marching in, Oh, I want to be in their numbers or oh, when the saints go marching in and as I was remembering that homily you know I could just envision uh, Father David marching in with the saints uh, and that gave me great consolation uh, as I continue reading my notes of that homily I used three words uh, to there were the three points that I wanted to reflect on on All Saints Day and now something that I already preached uh, several days before now that homily was being preached to me uh, and the three words that I used was inspiration uh, being proud of the saints proud of the saints a source of inspiration and hopefulness uh, so being proud of the saints you know they are our brothers and sisters who've made it and to apply that to Father David, you know, uh, I'm proud of him. I'm proud that he was a priest for 47 years. I'm proud of him that he fought the good fight. I'm proud of him who, who lived out and aspired to the greatest ideals of chastity and was able to do it. I'm proud of him that, that he was faithful to his priesthood to the end. Uh, just proud of him that that my big brother, uh, or as he used to say, my brother from another mother, my my big brother it's, it's, has made it to marching in with the saints. So one, I'm proud of him, uh, of Father David, his life, his testimony of faith. Two, I'm inspired by his life. Um, when I went to his house and, and try to see, um, when was the day that he actually died? Uh, November the 22nd is the, the day that the police declared his death because that was the day they found him. Um, but when I went with the family to his house, and as a good priest, I knew where to look to see when was his specific death. Uh, and I, I went to the breviary. Uh, we as priests vow to pray the liturgy of the hours. And I went to the, his breviary to see, okay, where are the ribbons? What were the last prayers he did? And the ribbons were in the morning prayer of Monday, November the 20th. Uh, why is that important? Uh, because November the 20th was the day of his priesthood ordination. So I, I believe firmly in faith that Father David died on the anniversary of his priesthood ordination. That was also confirmed when I looked at the Magnifica. He likes to meditate upon the Word and he will underline and highlight as he's meditating on the Word of God. And when I looked at the Magnifica, the last scribbles that he made was 
on Monday, November the 20th. I also went to his chair where he will often do his meditations and prayer, his little throne, uh, one of those lazy boys chairs, a big chair, a comfortable chair. And next to the chair, there was one of his devotional books that he was meditating on. I opened the book and it was one of those books that have uh, a meditation for each day of the year. And the last uh, meditation that he made was November the 20th. And then he wrote in cursive uh, on that day, my priesthood ordination. Uh, so I'm inspired by him. Uh, I'm proud of him and I'm inspired that he truly lived his priesthood for forever. Uh, now, the painting that I have of him over here, You see that I rode um, as a, it's almost like an aura around his head. Uh, the words that says, eh, Tu es sacerdos in, uh, in aeternum. You are a priest forever. So I'm proud of him. I'm inspired by him. And I'm filled with much hope. You know, something that, that was inspiring of Father David is uh, how he lived his life for those in need and I here have to uh, uh, recall Matthew uh, chapter 25 uh, which is the, the, the how the ends of time will be how, how our, the Lord will come as a king and he how he will judge and his judgment will be according to how we fed those who are hungry how we gave something to drink to the ones who were thirsty. How uh, we care for those who were the strangers. How we clothed uh, the naked. How we visited those who were sick. And how to visit the ones who were in prison. And truly, to see the life of uh, Father David, who exemplified that. He lived that fully uh, and in an exemplary way. He really lived out that teaching that when you do this for the least of my brothers, you do it for Christ Jesus. Well, how many times as a priest he fed us in our hunger with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in our thirst for justice, how often he would preach boldly. I recall one time he was preaching at, the, at a parish here in our diocese and someone stood up in the middle of the homily, criticized him and, and, and not in agreement. but. There he was, Father David, prophetically preaching, uh, giving us to giving giving something to drink uh, in our in our desire for justice and for for what is right and and how he gave us something to drink with the word of God. How uh, when you know as a priest he he he, he, he you know he called himself uh, eh, the Gringo Mas Mexicano, uh, and truly he was the Gringo Mas Mexicano, you know. As a priest, as an Anglo priest, he, he didn't have any obligation or any need to serve the Hispanic community. Especially after he retired. He could just retire, take it easy, enjoy uh, the fruit of his labor, and enjoy his last day until he'll die and not have to do so much work. He chose uh, to welcome the stranger. He chose to minister to the poor. He chose to be a father to the Hispanic community there's so much hunger and thirst for priests that will bring a message in Spanish to them. So he fed the hungry. He, he, he gave us something to drink in the midst of our sorrows uh, and in our need for justice. He also uh, welcomed the stranger and he clothed the naked. Uh, this symbolism of clothing the naked, you know, it's really a call in the many ways that Father David did that that when we were our, our most vulnerable situation, when we were naked uh, and vulnerable, uh, let it be in our shame and our guilt and our sinfulness, uh, when we were most vulnerable and naked before Him through the sacrament of reconciliation and we, we unveiled our soul asking for God's mercy, how a wonderful instrument of God's mercy He was. He really clothed us by reminding us that we are beloved children of the Father. He clothed us with God's mercy and forgiveness. He clothed us when we were most vulnerable and most naked before God. 
Not like Adam and Eve that when they heard God come in the garden, I heard your voice. We were afraid, so we hid. Uh, no. When we were most vulnerable, we heard God's voice. And we will go to Father David as a priest to confess our sins and to be clothed in the dignity of being a beloved son of the Father and an instrument of mercy indeed he was. But also in the many ways that he uh, visited the ones who were sick. You know, how many times he went to visit those who were sick to anoint them and, and to impart on them the sacred anointing of the sick. How many people he, he was instrumental uh, as, as they were dying to, to forgive their sins and to prepare them to eternal life. Indeed, he visited the sick. Not to mention that he indeed visited those who were in prison. And literally and, uh, and symbolically. Uh, not only did he work in prison ministry, uh, at least I know he did here in our diocese, but also, you know, when, when, when people who were struggling and were prisoners of addictions, of compulsions, uh, how he would share with them the wisdom and the, and the spirituality uh, of, of, of the great spirituality of the 12 steps, of God's mercy and forgiveness, and, and truly visited those who were in prison and gave them hope, gave them an inspiration. Indeed, Father David is a priest, and a priest forever. Because according to holy orders, once you're ordained, you, you're ordained forever. A priest uh, forever. Uh, in the line of Melchizedek of old. Uh, and as I was meditating on that homily, as I was begging our Blessed Mother, give me some form of consolation to read that homily and to remember him marching in with the saints, him, someone I'm proud of, him who was a source of inspiration and a great hope. Father David, in my belief, is in a great place. He is now rejoicing from his hard work. I am sure now the Father in Christ Jesus is saying to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Master. May he rest in peace and may he continue to live on in our hearts and in our minds. And may his life be a true source of inspiration that we too can live and march in with the saints. God blessings to all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit may the Lord and the last word I'm going to give it to Father David I hope you were able to read his smile and his joy from heaven God bless you all